very honored to be here tonight representing the JAX lab, where I did my postdoctoral research, as well as my very new uh, independent lab at Mass General Harvard Medical School. And I want to give a big shout out to Jennifer Sue, a research technician working with me, as well as Thomas Diefenbach, uh, director of the MGH Raygon uh, core facility for imaging, uh, for helping to generate this gallery image you see here. So many years ago, when I was a medical student, I was taking care of an elderly patient with pancreatic cancer that was suffering from intractable pain. And I went down to the pathology department in search of answer for answers, and I met Dr. Mari Mino, who patiently took me through all of this patient's tissue sections, including this one shown here. And that was the first time I learned about this concept of perineural invasion, where, as you can see here, these malignant cancer glands are surrounding and even invading into this nerve in the middle. And this image was really seared into my memory as a manifestation, a representation of my, my patient's pain. And I remember thinking, why would cancer cells form such intimate interactions with these nerves? What do they derive from this relationship and how could we intervene upon it? So I, I had to complete my medical training. So I filed this in the back of my mind. And many years later, uh, when I was back in the laboratory in Tyler Jackson's lab, I revisited this question. And I was surprised to find that at least as early as the late 1800s, uh, clinicians were looking into this. A urologist by the name of Dr. Hugh Young made a very prescient observation. He saw there was abundant nerves in many different types of peripheral tumors. And he asked, are these nerves just innocent bystanders witnessing a malignant process happening around them? Or perhaps do they play a more important role in the tumor development itself? For the next century, uh, the focus of cancer biology was really on other cells, the immune cells, the fibroblasts, the cancer cells themselves. And it wasn't until the early 2000s that Dr. Gustavo Ayala and some of his colleagues did a set of seminal experiments, really starting to reveal for the first time this remarkable attraction between cancer cells and nerves. And this really kicked off the field that we now call cancer neuroscience, which is still really in its infancy where we examine the when, the how, and the why cancer cells are influenced by nerve signals and vice versa. So my team and I look into this a little bit more and we found that not only were cancer nerve interactions implicated in neuropathic pain as with my patient, but they also seem to play an important role in many other aspects of cancer biology, including growth, resistance to metabolic stress and therapy, immune remodeling, metastasis, as well as seizures. So it became very apparent to us that if we could intervene upon these deleterious interactions, we could make a huge difference in our patient's survival and quality of life. But there was so much unknown about the mechanisms of these interactions that we really needed to start from ground zero. So I reconnected with Dr. Mari Mino uh, and also Kathy Cormier here in the, uh, the histology core. And over a year, we painstakingly put together 288 of these patient derived pores. So these are patients with pancreatic cancer. We found matched regions with and without nerve involvement, and we put them on these grids. And we performed a technique called digital spatial profiling. And we were able to identify a set of cancer cell related genes that were associated with nerve involvement in our human tumors. But what we really wanted to know was which of these genes, if any, were actually recruiting nerves to the tumor. And then once they were there, having this dialogue with them that was clearly beneficial for the tumor and then ultimately perhaps even invading into them. And to answer those questions, we needed to be able to turn up and down any of these genes of interest. We clearly couldn't do that in our patients, so we turned to developing a new model system. And one of those model systems is what you're seeing here. So in, three dimension, in a three-dimensional tissue matrix that mimics the tumor microenvironment, we grew these genetically engineered cancer cells in the form of these tumoroids, these green uh, ball structures that you see here. And we were able to grow them with various neurons that you see in orange on the left image and the, the pink on the right image. And by creating this model system, we could now link any of these genes that we discovered in our patients with cancer nerve interactions in a quantifiable way. We were also very interested in looking at dynamics. Uh, so uh, one of the postdocs working with me, Peter, generated this really nice video here. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Erica. Perfect. So what you're seeing here, again, this is a 3D model and those orange balls, those are those cancer tumoroids and they're migrating at different speeds towards what's in the middle is a ganglia, which is a collection of nerve cell bodies. 
And again, we're able to now measure the dynamics. And when you want to look at this in high resolution, we took a confocal image. The color's a little different. Uh, it's red here, but you can see these balls of cancer cells migrating along these purple nerve fibers towards this ganglia that was in the middle that we've plucked out and imaged separately. And you can see from the red all over the ganglia that many of these cancer cells in our model system were able to invade into that nerve. So this, among some other model systems that we developed, really gives us a chance to actually quantify and measure the effects of these various genes uh, on cancer nerve interactions. Oops, sorry. Too fast there. Um, all right, so by starting from our patients and looking at which cancer cell genes were truly linked and associated and therefore clinically relevant in terms of tumor nerve interactions, we then moved into mechanistic investigation in these novel model systems so we could actually functionally find out how these genes were facilitating cancer nerve dialogue. Now we're able to go back to that question that I asked back when I was a medical student, what can we do about it? So we're very excited. We have some candidates that we're, we're further validating and ultimately we want to develop new therapies that can actually block tumors' abilities to hijack the nervous system for their twisted agenda. So everything I showed you today was a massive team effort. I'm very thankful to all my colleagues and lab members uh, for all their support and, and great work on this. In particular, I mentioned Jennifer and Thomas already, Jimmy, Nicole, Karina, uh, Dennis, Ishmael, Hannah, and Peter shown here, as well as many of the members of the Jack Lab. I'm very grateful to the patients and their families um, for donating their time and tissues to our research, as well as all of our sponsors for believing in our work. And last, but certainly not least, I'm very grateful that my family could be here tonight. And thank you, everyone, for sticking around to the, the very end. Appreciate it.